title of the first section today is solving equations with fractions. In this section we'll solve equations, but the equations will contain fractions that we'll have to solve for. First equation is 5 over 7 x plus 1 over 7 equals 3. Solving this question again, we want to get x by itself, so our final answer would be x equals the answer. We're going to leave x on the left hand side, we can get rid of the fraction plus 1 over 7 by doing the opposite, which is minus 1 over 7. And again, we'll do that to both sides of the equation. 5 over 7x would stay the same. Plus 1 over 7 minus 1 over 7 would cancel. And we have the question 3 minus 1 over 7. To subtract numbers with fractions, we can first make all numbers fractions. 3 we can make a fraction by putting a 1 for the denominator. So we have 3 over 1 minus 1 over 7. If you remember before we can subtract fractions, the denominator or bottom number has to be the same. So in this case, if we have 7 and 1, the top number we can change to a 7 by multiplying by 7. And we'll multiply both the denominator, which is the bottom number, and multiplying the numerator by 7. So 3 times 7 would be 21 and 1 times 7 would be 7. So 3 over 1, we could change to 21 over 7. And we're still subtracting minus 1 over 7. So now we have 21 over 7 minus 1 over 7. Common denominators, or the bottom number is the same, which would stay the same as 7. And we can subtract 21 minus 1, which would be 20. So the original question 3 minus 1 over 7 would be 20 over 7. And last step for the question, we have 5 over 7 times x equals 20 over 7. If you're multiplying a fraction times a variable, a good way to get rid of that fraction is multiply by a reciprocal. A reciprocal is the same fraction, but flipped upside down. So instead of 5 over 7, We'll flip it upside down and have 7 over 5. If we multiply one side by 7 over 5, we'll multiply the other side by 7 over 5 also. When you multiply reciprocals, reciprocals cancel. We'll have 7 divided by 7, which cancels, and 5 divided by 5, which cancels. So we're left with x. And multiplying the fractions, if you wanted to, you could multiply straight across. You do not need common denominators when you multiply. A easier part on this one is we have a 7 for one numerator, a 7 for a denominator. We can cancel these out. 7 divided by 7, and we're left with 20 over 5. And if you divide 20 over 5, you'll get the answer x equals 4. Second question, and last question for the section. Negative 1 over 5y minus 2 equals 4. Again, we'll solve for y, so we'll move all the numbers to the other side, so we'll have y equals for our final answer. First step, the numbers away from y, the minus 2, we can cancel out by adding 2 on both sides. The negative one-fifths y would stay the same. Negative two plus two would cancel. And four plus two would be six. Last step for this question, we have a fraction times a variable. Like we did in the previous problem, anytime we have a fraction times a variable, we can multiply by the reciprocal, which again is the same fraction flipped upside down. 1 over 5 would become 5 over 1, and if the fraction is negative, 
the reciprocal is also negative. So we'll multiply by negative 5 over 1. And again, we'll do that on both sides of the equation. On the left-hand side, the 5s would cancel. 5 divided by 5, the 1s would cancel. And also a negative times a negative would be a positive, so those would cancel. And we're left with just y. This time we have 6 times negative 5 over 1. Negative 5 over 1 is the same thing as negative 5, so 6 times negative 5 would be negative 30. So the final answer, y equals negative 30. title of the next section is Solving Equations with Decimals. And again, this section will solve equations, but the equations will contain decimals. First question is 3.5 plus 10m equals 7.32. Again, we want to solve for m or get m by itself. In this case, the number is away from m, 3.5. We want to move to the other side first. This is adding 3.5, so we'll do the opposite of minusing 3.5. When we subtract decimals, make sure to line the decimals up. So 7.32 minus 3.5 with the decimal lined up in the middle. 3.5 and minus 3.5 would cancel. So 10m would stay the same. Equals. If you want to, you can add zeros to the end of the decimal. So negative 3.5 is the same as negative 3.50. And we can subtract. 2 minus 0 would be 2. 3 minus 5. Again, we can't subtract, so we'll have to borrow from the next number, which becomes a 6, and then a 13 we're subtracting. 13 minus 5 would be 8, and 6 minus 3 would be 3. When you subtract decimals, the decimal comes straight down, so we'll have 3.82. And last step, 10 times m, or multiplying by 10. Opposite of that would be dividing by 10. So the tens would cancel. If you wanted to, you could use long division. 3.82 divided by 10. One shortcut, when you divide by 10, you can move the decimal one spot to the left, and that would be the answer from dividing by 10. So we'll have 0.382, and we could put a zero in front of the decimal point. So m equals 0.382. And again, when you divide by 10, just move the decimal to the left one spot, and you'll get the correct answer. Second question, and last question for the section. 0.4x plus 9.2 equals 10. Again, solving for x, the number is away from x, adding 9.2. We can cancel that by subtracting 9.2 on both sides. If the 10 does not have a decimal, we can add a decimal after and also put a 0. 0.4x would stay the same. Equals. And subtracting decimals, 0 minus 2, we can't subtract. We can't borrow from the 0, but we can borrow from the 1 which will make this 0 a 9, and make the first 0 a 10. So 10 minus 2 would be 8. 9 minus 9 would be 0. And the decimal point, again, comes straight down. So we'll have 0 
0 0.4 times x equals 0 0.8. To get rid of a decimal that we're multiplying by, 0 0.4, we can divide by 0 0.4. 0 0.4s would cancel. x equals, we'll divide the two decimals, 0 0.8 and 0 0.4. If you set up a long division question, the numerator or top number goes inside, 0 0.8, and the denominator or bottom number goes outside, 0 0.4. If you remember when you divide decimals, you can have decimals inside the division symbol, but you're not allowed to have decimals outside before you start the question. So what we can do is move this decimal to the right one spot, and if we move the decimal one spot on the outside, we'll move it also one spot on the inside to the right. So instead of 0 0.4 going into 0 0.8, now we have the number 4 into 8. So 4 goes into 8 2 times. 2 times 4 will be 8. Subtracting will have no remainder, and the answer would be 2. So x equals 2. Temperature increases 10 degrees Celsius for every kilometer below the Earth. If the temperature is 22 degrees Celsius, how far down is a coal mine if its temperature is 45 degrees Celsius? Again, for this word problem, we can write an equation and solve for a variable. We're looking for the temperature, or how far down the coal mine is. How far down the coal mine is can be represented by x. Temperature increases 10 degrees Celsius for every kilometer. Again, x is the distance in kilometers. So if it's 10 degrees for every kilometer, that would be 10 times the number of kilometers, or 10 times x. If the temperature is 22 degrees to start with, that means we'll add 22. And the question is, how far down is a coal mine if the temperature is 45 degrees Celsius? That means the final temperature at the coal mine will be 45. So the equation 10x plus 22 equals 45, and we can solve for x. Again, the numbers away from x plus 22 we can cancel by subtracting 22 on both sides. So 10x would come down. 45 minus 22. We can just subtract 5 minus 2 would be 3, and 4 minus 2 be 2. So we have equals 23, 10x equals 23. To get rid of the 10 in front of the x, we can divide by 10. And our final answer will be x equals, the fraction does not reduce, 10 does not go in evenly, so we can leave it as 23 over 10. If you wanted to, you could divide by 10 again by moving the decimal one spot or using long division, and it will come out to x equals 2.3. So the coal mine is 2.3 kilometers below the earth.